Hey everybody, Kristen Novak here. I wanna take some time today to go over how to properly execute the deadlift. Specifically, how to maximize your power output by lifting most efficiently. As some of you might know, I am an online coach for counting your macros and offering periodized training programs revolving around variations of the three big lifts. I also offer one-on-one -on -one training for the three big lifts. So if you're in the British Columbia area, I do offer that. But I realized that I can't reach everybody with that so I thought it would be a good idea today to actually make a tutorial as I'm always being asked how do you deadlift well if you're gonna lift heavy which I don't recommend jumping into it's something that you have to work up to over time you have to have your form on point so let's talk about the proper forms and techniques for pulling conventional and sumo deadlifts <laughs> So before we get started of how to properly set up and execute the conventional and sumo deadlift, I want to right off the get-go talk about some major mistakes that people make. Yeah, let me show you all the, the first one is that the deadlift is not a squat. So many people will come up to me and say, hey, your hips are too high here. You need to drop your hips down. Pretend like you're doing a squat. No, not at all. Because if you drop your hips down like that, it's gonna cause you to go further forward and then you're over top of the bar while you're trying to stand up. It just doesn't work. It's a hip hinge movement. So if you over dip your hips, it can actually lead to rounding in your lower back, which can cause injury. So having your hips higher up, that's okay when you're deadlifting, both for conventional and for sumo. A lot of people will actually have spinal flexion when they're performing a deadlift. So by this, I mean they just have a lowered round back. And they're doing this because they're not pulling the slack out of the bar. They're not abrasing their abdominal wall. We'll talk about all this coming up. A lot of people will have the barbell separate from their shins. It's gonna cause greater torque on your lower back. So make sure the barbell is touching your shins. Before we get started on the setup and the execution of each of the movements, I wanna quickly talk about some of the equipment that I use. I do have a weight belt. If you don't have a weight belt as of yet, make sure that you get a powerlifting one that isn't Velcro, just because it's gonna ensure that it is locked in all the time. I find that with my Velcro belt, I have to readjust it all the time, and it's very frustrating when I'm doing the movement. And some people think that, oh, I don't want a powerlifting belt because I don't want the help and it's not about it being like a crutch or anything like that what it's actually gonna do is it's gonna brace your abdominal wall so that you can ensure that you have spine neutrality throughout the entire lift and by spine neutrality I'm talking all the way up from the cervical spine down to the thoracic spine leading all the way down to the lumbar the next piece of equipment I recommend if you're not looking to do a powerlifting meet I would recommend getting some straps I use these all the time so that's what these are right here you wrap the bar into place and it helps maximize your power output because I'm not concerned with my grip at all right now and if I wasn't using these I wouldn't be able to lift as heavy as I am I could but I would have to resort to chalk or doing a hook grip and this is not something I'm ready to do yet so if you're not looking to do a powerlifting meet anytime soon to stick to some straps right now. Will help with how much you're lifting. And another piece of equipment, either some long socks, pants, or some tights. If you're wearing just shorts and you don't have anything to protect your shins, you're probably gonna be pretty bruised. You actually want the bar pulling up your shins because that's the way to ensure that you have a straight bar path. So if you aren't pulling the bar up your shins, you're doing them wrong. So you need something to protect them. So I like to wear knee-high socks. That's the best way that it protects my shins because they're pretty thick. So whenever you're deadlifting, try to wear something that's gonna protect your shins. And lastly, probably the most important piece of equipment is your footwear. You wanna make sure you have a hard and a flat-soled shoe. 
too. So if you're wearing Nikes or sneakers, anything like that, that's the worst thing that you can wear because these things right here, they're like sponges. They're so soft in here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna decrease your energy transfer and it can cause some injuries because you're not completely stable in place. Another thing people will suggest then, okay, well, can I wear my squat shoes? And I definitely don't recommend these because of the heel right here. If you're wearing a shoe that has a heel in it, you're actually gonna have to lift the bar further away from the ground, which results in more energy being spent. You want to have less distance to pull the bar from the ground. So that's why I recommend a flat soled shoe. I honestly use my Chuck Taylors. These are completely grippy on the bottom. They're completely flat and I don't have to pull the bar as far away. If you have any other shoes, you can wear deadlifting slippers or wrestling shoes or no shoes at all, but I definitely recommend a flat soled shoe. So let's break down the setup of each of the deadlifts and then we'll talk about how to execute both of them. Let me show you all the way. So first of all, the setup for conventional deadlifts. Your foot position is going to be pretty similar across the board. You want to have your foot position in a placement where you're going to have the most power doing a vertical jump, which is typically shoulder width distance apart. That's where your foot placement is going to be. Now, where you put your foot underneath the bar, you want to pretend that you're cutting your foot in half. Make sure that the bar is touching your shin as your starting point, and that's cutting your foot in half. So that will be your foot placement. And then for your hands, you want to have your hands just outside of your shins. So I like to pretend that my hands come straight down and they're just grazing my shins as I go to grab the bar. So once your feet are in position, your hands are in place, you're ready to start the movement. You want to drop your hips just a little bit to the point that your shins are perpendicular to the ground and that your scapula is over top of the bar. You don't want to be sitting back or anything like that. You want to ensure that your hips are still up to the point where your shins are perpendicular and your scapula is over the bar. So that's your starting position. And then before you execute the movement, you want to perform the Valsavo Maneuver Breathing Method. This is where you're going to take a deep breath in and you're going to push your tongue to the roof of your mouth to lock that air into your stomach. So honestly, like if you can see right here, your stomach should be completely full with air and that's the best way to brace your abdominal wall. And then you push the tongue to the roof of the mouth in order to lock that air in and that's going to help keep your spine neutral for the entire movement. It's not until you reach almost to the top of the movement where you let all the air out. Oh, let me show you all. Once you take your deep breath in, you have your air held into your tummy. Before you actually pull up the bar, you don't want to just jerk it up. So many people will do this and it can actually lead to lower back injury. You want to actually pull the slack out of the bar. So by doing this, you want to kind of pack your lats into place. A cue for that would be to pretend like you're bent Ending the bar and that will automatically engage your lats and if you try to listen you should be able to hear a tiny little click and that's the bars slack being pulled out at that point you're ready to actually stand straight up So what you're gonna do next is you wanna pretend that you're pushing the ground away from you. So it's kind of like a leg press. So you push the ground away from you. And then once the bar has left the ground, you squeeze your glutes to drive your hips forward. Now, once you stand straight up, that's all you wanna do. You just wanna lock out your back. You don't wanna hyper extend your lower back. So the last movement that you need to do is putting the bar down. So you don't want to lower the bar too slowly. A deadlift is not an eccentric exercise. So if you lower the bar too slowly, you can actually really injure your lower back, but you don't want to just drop the bar either. All you want to do is you want to unlock your glutes, drive your hips back and then place the bar down and hold the bar the entire time. The bar should be put down in a straight line. So the deadlift going up should look exactly the same as going down. So let's move on to sumo deadlifts. Let's talk about the setup. So 
So the foot position is actually gonna vary quite significantly based on the person. Basically, you just kind of want to play around with it where your foot position is started. So you actually take a wider stance and the width of that stance varies for the person. So you just want to play with it and your starting point should be where your shins are still 90 degrees from the ground. So I recommend just kind of playing with it in a mirror, watching yourself and seeing what it looks like when you bend down and if your shins are 90 degrees to the ground. If they aren't, then just play with your foot placement, either bring them in or bring them out until you get your shins 90 degrees to the ground from your starting point. You also want to ensure that your feet are pointed out because if they're pointed in like this, when you go to stand up for a sumo, your knees are actually going to be in the way. So you want to actually point your toes out. So for your hands, they're actually going to be on the inside of the legs this time. And you just want to make sure you just bring your arms down straight like this. And then that's where you grab the bar. So many people will bring their arms in like this. And that's actually going to create a lot of tension on your back and it can reduce energy transfer. So just ensure that your hands are straight down when you go to grab the bar. And then the rest of the setup is the same as the conventional deadlift. You want to drop your hips a little bit, but don't over dip them. You want to have your scapula over top of the bar. You take your deep breath in to brace your abdominal wall and then stand up by squeezing your glutes and driving your hips forward. Again, when you do the lockout, don't hyperextend your lower back. All you're doing is just locking out your lower back by standing straight up. So when I talked about the conventional deadlift pretending to push the ground away from you like a leg press, the cue for sumo deadlifts is a little bit different because your toes are pointed out. So you wanna pretend that you're spreading the floor and that's a cue for you to stand up when you're executing the sumo deadlift. And then putting the bar down, you're gonna perform the exact same method for a sumo deadlift. You unlock your glutes, drive your hips back, and place the bar down. Don't drop the weight, but don't move the weight slowly down because you don't wanna create that torque on your lower back. So give both of them a try. That's the only way you're gonna be able to figure out which one is gonna work for you, which one feels more comfortable, less awkward, and that's your deadlift. So that's it, you guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you would like to see more more of these videos can you just do me a favor throw this video a like maybe send a comment below of other tutorials that you would like to see you can also visit my website kristinnovacfit.com if you're interested in any of my coaching services that i do offer and thank you so much for watching you guys i'll see you in the next one oh, let me show you all the way.